the success of Beretta USA is really attributable to the vision that Mr. Beretta had. He's the one who convinced his uncle to have a permanent U.S. presence. Against a certain amount of opposition, he pushed for that. He saw the value in it. He's the one who insisted that we pursue the M9 contract. He's the one who hired Bob Bonaventure and Carlos Nagy and people who had great talent and great drive and great, you know, great ability. We could not have succeeded without those people, but we wouldn't have had those people had it not been for Mr. Beretta. A family grows and a family changes, but in the end, it's family and it stays together. And that's why I think Beretta USA is a family. As a young man, Mr. Beretta always wanted to have a manufacturing facility in the United States. He worked tirelessly and met much resistance, but never lost hope, overcoming many obstacles, both at home and abroad. For uh, uh, my father and his uncle, Pier Giuseppe Beretta, uh, the distribution aspect of uh, the Made in Italy product were always uh, very, very important. Having an importer uh, was uh, a solution, but probably not uh, the best solution. They decided to uh, distribute uh, directly. Personalmente, <coughs> non avevo il minimo dubbio che eh, per me l'America era una realtà. His dream finally came true when in 1977 he acquired FI Industries Inc. C'è venuta la possibilità di acquistare questa azienda, piccola azienda FI dove siamo locati oggi. One of the key person in establishing uh, Beretta USA Corporation was, uh, from what I understand, uh, Leo Goldschmidt. At the same time, there was another uh, important person uh, that uh, was very close to my great uncle and uh, uh, my father, that was Mr. Folkivici, that was uh, a businessman, but uh, with an international experience. In the family, we always uh, try to uh, take challenge, but always uh, having good uh, uh, help from other people that are close uh, to the family as uh, professional or as friends. In the summer of 1979, Mr. Robert Bonaventure became general manager. The whole object at that point in 1979 was try to make these small pistols because it was against the law to import them. So about January of 1980, we put in motion getting those guns down here. I had a lot of help from a young guy by the name of Carlos Nagy. So uh, after Beretta purchased uh, the existing facility, uh, FI Industries, a lot of the machines were scrapped. The, whatever could be salvaged was salvaged and then they started bringing in some of the machines from Italy. So with Carlos, we managed to get the equipment going. He did the communicating with the factory. I did the communicating with the sources to get the parts in there. And uh, first we got the production 300 a month, then maybe five or 600 a month. I was talking to Ugo on the phone. He said, make more. So we finally got up to about 2,000. He said, make more. I finally hit 5,000 a month. He says, okay, you can stop. <laughs> the most important uh, part was finding uh, good people, good partner. And, uh, and the first person uh, that uh, was uh, key uh, uh, to establish uh, this uh, distribution was uh, Tommy Forbes, uh, that is uh, still a great friend of Beretta. And where Tom distinguished himself was his personal commitment to meeting with the customer. The offices and administration were right on the production floor. So when you came out of your office, you saw Meval machines. So we were a very close-knit group. The building was much smaller, obviously. I believe there was probably 50 people when I started.
The relationship with Hugo was very close. Uh, he was here at least every two months and he was a very big help because he would keep asking me, is there something you want me to do? He would call me from Italy and say that. And I would say, well, if you can come over, it would be very helpful. And he would be here. Well, when, the, when Beretta was a small company, it was uh, really, you, you felt a, a sense of camaraderie with everybody because everybody knew each other. Our lives kind of intermingle where we become not only a family at home, but a family here as well. Jeff Ray is one of the key people that was on the side uh, first of uh, my father and then now of uh, myself, a loyal uh, person that was uh, on the side of Beretta USA, the Beretta group and the Beretta family uh, since uh, 40 years. One of the attractive things about working at Beretta USA is that you get to work directly with Mr. Beretta. And to me, it's like if I was working in the Ford Motor Company, I'm, I'm, and I'm literally working with and talking to, on a daily basis, Henry Ford. And we just all got along. Everybody got along well. It was a nice place to come to work. I enjoyed working. It was incredible that the Beretta family basically stopped everything in Gardone to focus on the M9. Partivamo come semi sconfitti, cioè la gara era improponibile quasi per noi. When we got the M9 contract and we're working on the proposal, Marie Catterton was was his assistant and did the typing of the proposal for the M9. And that's a gigantic book. It's like 600 pages. We went through a lot of people. The challenges of the military being so strict on us because they felt they had to be because of the challenges of certain companies not wanting, you know, Barrett as a foreign company to have been awarded the contract. Although there were many people responsible for Beretta's success over the years, Marco Beretta stands out as one of the pillars. He was the facility director responsible for all manufacturing of Beretta Army. Marco Beretta è stato, è stato determinante, a parte la visione chiara di tutto quello che fare, a parte la conoscenza delle armi. Of course, right in the beginning of the year, there was a big gun show, which later became the shot show. Everybody wanted these famous well-known guns. Here's Beretta set up in a little room there with a, like a card table with a few guns on it. I remember I was given a thousand dollars to build a booth for the first SHOT Show. I felt pretty insignificant. <laughs> Compare that with today. <laughs> the M9 contract was really the most important event for Beretta USA and I remember when it happened and it was a change of life for everybody of our family because from one day to another the popularity of the Beretta name became huge in US. I had a call from my wife. The congressman here had called for me and I was at the show so he told my wife Beretta won the contract. So she called me but before she got a hold of me she got a hold of Ugo. So Ugo was the first one to know that we won the contract. Ah, oh, he was jubilant. You couldn't you could hold him down. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And boy, did we celebrate. Mr. Beretta thought that was the time to celebrate. We had about 90 to 120 people at that time prior to getting the contract, but we had to ramp up to about 550 people, and we had to put in place all the departments. The government required quite a few things as far as how you do your purchasing, how you do the human resources, a lot of federal rules and regulations and so forth had to be followed. Well, the, some of the challenges that we experienced when we started was uh, getting people that had any experience whatsoever. As the M9 started, we had to expand. We needed new warehousing, we needed new shipping, we needed new manufacturing floors. Mr. Bonaventure was our general manager and he was very manufacturing focused. You know, at the time, our goal was to make the M9 pistol 
and to manufacture it here and meet all our strict uh, Army schedule requirements. At the time, we were setting up all the machines from Brita, Italy to basically replicate the M9 manufacturing process exactly as possible here in the United States. To be honest with you, my reaction, I think, was different than everybody else's. Uh, everybody was happy. Like I said, I was not at the SHOT Show, but everybody was celebrating, having a good time. And I was sitting in my office thinking, oh my God, because I knew the work that, that laid ahead of us. Well, we have many challenges uh, starting the contract here. Uh, many, many challenges. Um, very difficult but we had a lot of people, we had a big focus, we had Mr. Ugo Gusali Beretta behind us all the way that pushed everybody to work extremely hard to accomplish things. There was a sense of mission and by and large we tried to create an atmosphere of let's all cooperate and graduate. I tecnici erano tutti italiani, erano delle squadre italiane che venivano qui. Ciao Sandro, come stai? Bene, bene. Ti ricordi quando eh, sono arrivate le prime macchine per le lavorazioni? Quando uscite la numero uno con la matricola numero numero uno è stata un'esplosione di gioia e di felicità. Sì. We just had a great family atmosphere, and everybody that worked here knew everybody. When I first came to Beretta, marketing was basically a, an executive responsible for marketing, working with an outside advertising agency. Very early on, we were basically just proposing an Italian product solution to the U.S. market. Over these 30 years, though, we've grown considerably, where now it's the U.S. market demands that are driving the development of the product. Of course, today we have uh, social media, we have uh, our web-based marketing. Things that didn't exist 30 years ago at Bray USA are all uh, needs and, and realities of today's market. Well, Ugo's idea was that he had the idea to have uh, a store here in the United States. And they were also trying to introduce the clothing line at that time. A friend of Ugo's told him that this is a time for you to buy a building in New York City. Well, the original property they wanted was off Madison Avenue. People that understand retailing on Madison Avenue, either you're on Madison Avenue or you're not on Madison Avenue. The Berettas made the right decision to be on the avenue. And one of the things that uh, Mr. Hugo Sali Beretta was very, very much aware of and very conscientious of was the need to expand uh, the sale of our long guns, our shotguns. And then after that, the Berettas started opening stores in Paris, London, uh, Milan, other, other locations. But, but the, the U.S. operation was kind of where things started. One of the oldest companies in the world broke ground in Middle Tennessee today. Italian gunmaker Beretta is moving all of its U.S. manufacturing operations to Sumner County. It's stata una decisione molto difficile, però io penso che sia stata una decisione buona. Well, when I heard that the company was moving to Gallatin, I was very sad. What you've known for 35 years is now gone. I've been to the Gallatin facility. I, I was uh, very proud to be able to be part of the opening ceremonies. The Gallatin facility is beautiful. <laughs> it's incredible. You drive over a hill and you have this dramatic, dramatic building that's kind of popping up out of the middle of apparently nowhere. And it really makes a statement, this is Beretta USA. The sweet part is that in Gallatin, we got to build the building itself from scratch, from the beginning design it exactly the way we wanted it to be. And I think that the family has looked into the 21st century and beyond by putting Gallatin into place. 
and taking us from that small beginning that we had with the few me valve machines to the robotics that this plant was just not big enough to do. The Akuki campus has been the start. Companies like Benelli USA and uh, Stöger have found uh, their home here in Akuki. We went from a single building in Akuki to three buildings, two in Maryland and one in Virginia. So Beretta USA was kind of the foothold in North America for the growth of what became an important part not only of the Beretta Firearm Company, but Beretta Holding, which is the corporation that actually owns all of these different companies worldwide. But it was also a learning ground that taught the entire, not just the Beretta family, but the group of managers and executives and teammates throughout the organizations, okay, how do you do this in the right way? What's the best way to establish a new facility, a new company in a new country? Since we start working, uh, me and my brother, uh, we have always uh, received uh, a very strong uh, uh, input from our father of uh, how important was the United States uh, on one side and how difficult was uh, uh, to manage a company uh, in, a, uh, in a completely different country than uh, Italy. Uh, me and my brother, we are executive vice president of Beretta USA. Uh, and uh, then uh, Piero, uh, he is uh, also the president uh, of Benelli USA. For us uh, uh, in Beretta, uh, the relationship uh, with uh, uh, our people that work with us has always been uh, kind of special. For uh, uh, our family, we have always understand that uh, if we wanted to be successful, we needed uh, uh, good people that work with us. And so the relationship that we are able to, to establish with our people has always been of paramount importance. Mr. Beretta, treats everybody like family. He made you feel like you were part of his family and he appreciated everything you did. I think I will always carry with me that if you work hard, you can accomplish some very difficult things. I think I'll always carry that with me. I dated here, I married here, I had three children here. Um, and those milestones I shared with those co-workers that I had here. You build up a team because you know you're relying on each other. The three words that I, I feel characterize Beretta are uh, iconic, patriotic, and forgettable. Family. Family. They're like extended family for me. We've had marriages, we've had births, we've had deaths, and these were all things that we shared, you know, as a family. I'm excited to see where the next generation will take Beretta USA.